Hey guys, Dr. Lara here with Val and Indy. Uh, Indy is a, she's here today for her leptospirosis vaccine. And if you guys haven't seen Val in our videos before, uh, she is one of my great team members. She is a veterinary technician. And so she is here today, or Indy's here today rather, for a vaccination, which we call lepto for short. Now, the lepto, uh, leptospirosis is a condition which is typically transmitted in the urine of uh, different animals like uh, possums, foxes, raccoons, cows, and it'll normally stay in what we call stagnant water. Um, so like puddles and that kind of stuff, it doesn't do well in like running bodies of water. And it is something that can potentially go ahead and survive in warm, moist, stagnant environments for a prolonged period of time, up, for mo up to months. Uh, that being said, depending on what part of the United States and the world that you live in, um, it is something that here in the United States we'll typically see seems to be more prevalent between the months of July and November. Um, and so it is something that is transmitted through a, what we would call, um, an oral route. So typically if the dogs go ahead and sniff the water or drink some of that standing water, then that would be something that would go ahead and have either some urine or either some of the organisms from the, uh, of leptospirosis. And that would be something, a way that the dogs, most dogs get this particular organism. And I say dogs, um, cats can get it too, but it is something that is very uncommon in cats. Cats seem to be more resistant to this particular organism. Now, this is an organism that can cause uh, kidney disease or kidney failure. It can also cause uh, liver failure. Uh, the good news is that it is something that is treatable. The only thing that I typically tell people is that it does normally require uh, anywhere between, I say, between five to seven days of hospitalization. And it can get kind of costly because what will end up happening is that the patients will come in not feeling well. And so we as the doctors go ahead and start doing a number of different tests to see what's going on. Uh, a lot of times we will see the elevated liver values and or kidney values, which will lead us to try and then look into other potential causes or causes of why those values are elevated. Um, meanwhile, they'll be in the hospital on IV fluids and on appropriate antibiotics. Typically, the antibiotic course that we will usually follow will last anywhere between three to six weeks long. The other thing uh, is the way that it's typically tested for is a couple of different ways. It's going to be through a blood and a urine sample. Now, we can do a test, which is usually um, something that just tells us about the prevalence of or the existence of the disease in the the, the body. Um, the other way that normally we would test for it, and this is an older test, would be what we call leptotiters. Leptotiters, normally what we would do is we would check these particular values in the beginning, um, and then what will end up happening is we will go ahead and check those blood values later, probably a few weeks later, and if those values become elevated, then um, what we can do is that will give us the indication that yes, she has been exposed and yes, she does have an active infection. Now we do not wait to get those tests, that, that particular test result back. We assume based on all the tests that we've done before that, that she potentially has this particular condition and we would treat her as such until proven otherwise. Um, that being said, this is also a condition which um, is what we call zoonotic. Zoonotic means that it can be transmitted from animals to humans, um, and so that does mean that you yourself can potentially develop some liver and or kidney disease. About 90% of people will normally go ahead and just experience more mild symptoms, um, and about 10% of people will experience those some more severe symptoms of you know, kidney disease and or liver disease. Uh, the dogs, about 80 to 90% of them will recover with treatment. Um, normally what will end up happening is the, any, the elevated kidney values will start to decrease after about 10 to 14 days, um, if not potentially sooner. And then once the patients are stabilized, we'll check them one month out, three months out, and six months out to make sure that everything is staying the way that it should. 
Now, that being said, in this particular part of Florida, we only I've only seen about three cases in 11 years, so it's not something that is very prevalent in this particular area. Uh, also, the leptospirosis vaccine is one of the vaccines, if not the vaccine, that causes the most allergic reactions. And a lot of times breeders will mention, don't give X vaccine. And typically they're talking about the leptospirosis vaccine because it is a vaccine that does seem to cause allergic reactions. In the past, it was something that was incorporated into um, what we call the distemper parvo vaccine, and it has now been removed. And so, you know, they still offer it with the distemper parvo vaccine, but now you can give it separately. I will normally only give this particular vaccine if people are planning on taking their pets to, you know, um, wooded areas or areas where a lot of other wild animals uh, frequent or even other dogs frequent and that kind of stuff. And I always tell the clients, you know, the possibility of the vaccine reaction. In this particular area of South Florida, most of my clients end up not giving the particular vaccine after we have the, the conversation. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right or the wrong thing for you. You have to go ahead and talk to your veterinary professional, do your research, and then get together with the veterinarian and make the decision together. Now, today what we are going to do is we are gonna be giving her her first vaccine on her left shoulder. Um, the reason we like to give uh, the vaccines on the left shoulder, or at least the leptospirosis vaccine on the left shoulder, is because we wanna be able to track where we give the vaccines. So if there is some sort of allergic reaction, we can say this particular vaccine is usually given on this spot. Back in the day, most veterinarians would give the vaccines between the shoulder blades because there's a ton of skin there, usually not a whole lot of nerve endings, so it's not as sensitive, and it's very easy to give the injections. What we ended up finding was it ended up causing a lot of inflammation in that particular spot and made the patients more prone to uh, developing tumors, scar tissue, and that kind of stuff. So now we try to spread the vaccines out and identify which vaccines are given in which areas. So if you guys don't like to watch this kind of stuff, then I'm gonna go ahead and give the vaccine. You can avert your eyes. For you guys who do wanna watch, we're gonna go ahead. You can see we're using a very small needle. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just going to pick up the skin. I'm gonna inject, I'm already in. I'm gonna pull back on my plunger to make sure I'm in, feel the vacuum, and then inject it in. And that's pretty much it. I will say that yeah. Indy is pretty much an ideal patient. Uh, shout out to mom and dad. Uh, she did fantastic with the injection, not a peep. And, you know, that was pretty much it. The one other thing that normally when we do any sort of vaccination is we will usually check the temperature. If you look over here on the scale uh, without catching some glare, it, her temperature is 103.1. That temperature is elevated. Uh, normal for dogs goes up to 102.5. I anticipate, if you guys notice, um, Indy is panting and has been trying to want to get off the table, and that is most likely tied to nerves. So, uh, you know, mom said that every time she goes to the vet, she always has an elevated temperature, and she didn't really describe anything um, going on with Indy, so we anticipate that most likely that is tied to nerves. It is something important. You always have the decision um, and the right to tell the veterinarian, I'd like to hold off and go ahead and recheck the temperature. Uh, in a few days and see if the temperature is repeatable and then go from there. If you guys found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have any questions about this particular topic or there are other topics that you wanted to discuss, please put it uh, on the comment box below. Otherwise, if you know somebody who needs to see this, please share it with them. Please keep yourself safe and take care. Bye-bye.